many games you're going to win this fall? Is the pertinent question that we have for the Colorado Buffs. Coach Prime headed into year two in Boulder. You got one of the top quarterbacks in the country, Shador Sanders. Got one of the best overall capital C, capital F, capital P college football players in Travis Hunter. Over under win total at FanDuel Sportsbook set at five and a half with the over heavy juice here. Um, Tom, I'll let you get first crack at this one. Do you see a step forward for Colorado uh, after the way last season finished? And how do you see the schedule finishing up? Not a significant one. No. Um, I, I've got the under here. I, I I just look at the team, and yes, yeah, Shadur's one of the top QBs in the country. Travis Hunter is one of the top players in the country, regardless of position, even regardless of which position you want to play him at. And I do think skill-wise, they've got some guys here. Jimmy Horn was good for them last year. You got Will Shepard coming in via the portal. You got Jonte Weister coming in via the portal. Those are two guys who I think can be very you know solid players for the Buffs on offense. I still have very little faith in this team on the lines of scrimmage. You can argue that, you know, these new guys are better than the guys we brought in last year, and maybe they are, but I still look at a team that has so much depth upon the lines of scrimmage that they are relying on a true freshman left tackle. And I know Jordan Seaton was a five-star, one of the top tackles in the class last year, but so was Caden Proctor, and he struggled playing at Alabama with four other excellent Alabama offensive linemen next to him. Jordan Seaton does not have that benefit, so... He's protecting the blind side of a quarterback whose worst tendency is to hold on to the ball for far too long. I don't know if that's going to solve a whole lot of problems that Colorado had last year. Defensively on the defensive line, it's a whole new ball game. Everybody on that unit is new. Even the backups are new for the most part. So I just, I have to see it before I buy into the idea that Colorado's lines of scrimmage are so much better than what we saw last year. Now, when we watch those first few games of the season and they're playing like that, okay, cool. I will buy in and I will change my opinion of what this Buffalo team can do. But going to the schedule, you start with North Dakota State. It's not the North Dakota State that we're used to seeing over the right. last 15 to 20 years, but it's still a pretty good team. It's still going to be a tough test. But then you've got to hit the road to Nebraska. And yes, you beat Nebraska last year at home. This year's Nebraska is better than last year's, and you're playing them in Lincoln this time. So I don't know if you can count on that as a win. You're going on the road to Colorado State, which how many overtimes did they need to beat Colorado State last year at home? Buddy. It's This is Colorado State. I mean, look, just listen to how Jay Norvell talked last yeah, year. I was going to say, we got big Super Bowl. I'm giving yeah. Colorado the win, but there is big Super Bowl energy. When yeah, they this have is their Super Bowl. Collins. You get into conference play. You're going on the road for UCF. You're going on the road for Arizona. You're going on the road for Texas Tech. You're going on the road for Kansas. A lot of those more winnable games that you are on that same tier at are on the road. Your home slate is featuring Oklahoma State, Utah, Cincinnati. That's good. You're going to win that game. I have no doubt about that. But then Kansas State. So your home games have a little bit added level of difficulty. So I just this team can be better. But I don't know that their record's going to be better. So I've got five and seven. I've got them going under. I'm going over. Um, I'm not going to like be painted as a Dion or as a Colorado hater simply because Dion is setting expectations that are, in my opinion, crazy. Right? Relative to the Vegas expectations, like Vegas is not going on Good Morning America and saying we're going to make the playoff. Okay, that I will fade. The Vegas stuff, five and a half. As bad as I think their transfer class was last year after Shador and Travis, and I, I did like Jimmy Horn, um, you know, I don't think that the guys they brought in this year are bad. I don't think they're like elite level players, but like the kid they got from Arizona State, I think is a decent player. The, the tackle they got from Houston, the, the defensive lineman, I think is, is decent. Like he wasn't the better Houston tackle. Oregon got that guy. But I think they got a good number of guys who can play in the Big 12. And to me, if I'm betting Colorado's under, I want to bet Colorado's alt line under, okay? Because you're, I think you're basically betting on getting into that depth earlier in the season than Colorado wants to. So if I was going to take the under on Colorado, I would, I would use that little slider and I would slide it all the way to left and be like under four and a half, under three and a half, you know, like, like give me like a plus 250, give me like a plus 450 type payout on that because 
you know, there are no games that are gimmies on this schedule. And if they suffer injuries early, then this team could be like a two and 10 or three and nine type team. But I don't know when the injuries will come or if they will. Certain teams do stay healthier. And I think you know, they have a much more competent level of talent. Now, coaching, man, I got no idea. I'm very scared about the O-line coach they hired, guy with no real experience of coaching. I don't know if I love the, the Shermer hire, but I do think Travis is a, or excuse me, I, I think Shador is a good quarterback. And I like Travis a ton. I think they'll play him like crazy. So give me the over on Colorado at five and a half. Do you believe? Bud does. I do. I'm a believer Bud in Colorado. Does. <laughs> Number one, Colorado, Buffs believer. Oh, Buffs Bud. I'm slight under here. I don't want to bet this. Um, no, I'm not betting it. I, I wish that they got Baylor late. I think Dave Aranda is the number one hot seat coach in this conference. And I think that you wish that you weren't playing them on September 21st. I wish that you were playing them in November. Um, you know, we talked about the mystery team that is uh, a Texas Tech, the uh, Cincinnati, you know, some of these games that are going to be so crucial because they are going to be potentially, you know, especially with a win total here of five and a half, they might be fighting for that bowl eligibility win against teams like Utah and Kansas and Oklahoma State, teams that are going to be in the middle of the Big 12 title race or trying to close out what's going to be a really successful season. I mean, you're not going to have any, any chance to jump up and get somebody. Uh, from the from the personnel perspective, I echo a lot of what you guys say, especially when it comes to like Dallin Hayden was good at Ohio mm -hmm. State. Like I I okay. think that if that offensive line, which you know Deion Sanders spent a lot of time talking about at Big Twelve Media Days, if they are able to create some physicality and bring some balance to the offense, then this could be a really really good group. Um, they can run the football, throw it as a compliment to being able to. Uh, have it as a compliment to being able to throw the football. But I, I think that there are a few too many, you know, roster disadvantages here, not roster, uh, schedule disadvantages here to feel super confident. So many toss up games, the way that I see this um, and just not a lot of certified W's. I do not want to wager this. It will not be a lock, but I've got five and seven, which is an improvement on the win total from last year. Uh, but under the number that they've set here uh, at FanDuel Sportsbook, I will go under the five and a half. Does anybody want to bet what Danny took? Oh, Danny took over. Did he take Danny, over? Danny took the under five oh. and a half. Um, let me ask you a hypothetical question. If Deion Sanders was an average game coach last year, or just slightly below average, as opposed to being probably the worst in-game coach in the country, or at least in the power four. Like, for instance, if he doesn't badly botch the clock management against Oregon State, if he mm -hmm. actually understands the overtime rules, what do you think the win total is? Because I think their win total last year would have been five and seven as opposed to four and eight, you know? And Shador missed like the down the stretch some time when, when he was banged up. Like if you think about like the baseline that this team played at, now granted, we're assuming Dion gets a better coaching acumen under him. He's never really had to coach in close games because they dominated the SWAC with their talent level. But I mean, if he improves as an in-game coach just a little bit, they, they could be better. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's, well, maybe so it's you six are, you, under, not five and a half juice mm -hmm. over. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how the market would react, but you also did a good job of calling me to task of um, remembering the context of some of those one score losses. Yeah. Like it was a great line to be able to pull when we're talking about Colorado and saying like, okay, maybe a few more bounces of the ball, maybe a few more like different breaks. And this could have been a, you know, seven win team last year when getting in the flow of those games was, you know, storming back to make it a one score game when you know it was seemingly put away there was a lot of uh you know the final score maybe indicated a game yes. that was much uh, closer when the reality was a little bit more lopsided so I, I i that had me going back and sort of reanalyzing the different circumstances of the oregon state game the utah game the ucla game you know those were games that if you just scan the way it all looks on the schedule you're like man uh, absolutely. Uh, regression. Regression says they're taking a big step forward, but it was unique circumstances all along the way. Yeah. So. Like I said, if they come out early in the season and their lines are pushing people around, my opinion of that team changes greatly because, I mean, they had skill position talent last year, so that really doesn't change anything for me.